Hey, y'all, this is Pastor Coach McKissick of Be The Ram Global Fellowship. This is your midweek Bible study. It's August, so yes, we are on another uh, series in our Bible study. Last month in July, we did the prophets, and I learned a lot, especially from that last one. I really learned uh, about the fact that prophets, they went through some stuff. We say we got some prophets now, and I'm not saying that we don't. However, those prophets, you know, they... <laughs> Man, when you call yourself something and you live by it, there is a price to pay. There is an entry fee. And that entry fee is not cheap. I'm telling you now. This month, we are talking about evangelism. We are talking about evangelism. Why are we talking about it? I think it's important. One of the biggest struggles that I have or had and still hold with uh, ministry is just evangelism. That's because I'm not really the kind of person that will start the conversation with you. I'll finish it. I'll carry it on for a long time. I can talk once I'm comfortable with you. But being an evangelist, you know, practicing evangelism requires getting out of your comfort zone, starting conversations with other people. And that's just an area that I struggle in. I'm not ashamed of the gospel at all. Trust me. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, but sometimes I just don't like talking to other people. I just, you know, it's kind of like, how do you do that? How do you start that conversation? So that's what we're talking about uh, this month, the month of August. And I think it's a great time because we're going back, as far as educators, back into the building. So we'll see other coworkers. We'll see other people. We'll mingle with people that we have not met or seen in a long time. Students are going back to schools. Athletes are going back to teams. And you may want to be an evangelist too. But first, let's pray. God, I thank you for uh, this time of teaching and receiving and learning your holy word. God, I thank you for anointing my tongue in this moment. I thank you that the listeners and the viewers are receptive to what you have placed in my heart. God, I thank you for loving me in spite of me. I thank you for blessing me with a beautiful family, a lovely wife, amazing children, three of them, an amazing goddaughter, an amazing god granddaughter. God, I thank you for having supportive brothers, aunts, uncles, uh, my mother, my mother in love, my, my church family. I, I'm just, I'm in a thankful and a grateful season in my life right now, God. I'm blessed, and I'm blessed by you, and you are the best. So God, we just thank you for everything that you've already done for us. We ask that you would anoint this word, anoint this time of fellowship, teaching, preaching, receiving, learning. In your son Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. So once again, we are talking about evangelism this month. The topic for today, for today's lesson, is the Great Commission. I know you've heard it before. Well, I will assume that you have, and that's something that I say that I don't like to do. But if you're on here, now you have heard it, because you heard it a couple seconds ago. The Great Commission. This is what we are commissioned to do. This is what we are supposed to do. A commission is when you are called to do something. The Great Commission. You know, that, that's just something that we have. And our scripture is Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. If you don't know who Matthew is, he is one of the uh, one who wrote the Gospels of Jesus Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and we also include John. And these are the stories of the life of Jesus Christ. I like Matthew. I really like Luke's version of things because they break it down a lot. But today we're talking about Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. It should be on your screen. So if you just want to close your eyes and listen, you can do that or you can read along with us. However, I'll read. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That is the word of God for you people of God. With the hearers and doers of God's word, please say amen, amen, and amen. So let me break it down and go back one more time. The Great Commission is for you, me, to go and make disciples of all nations. That means help people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my word. So 
our uh, job is to go and help people learn about Jesus and God and help them believe in him and help them obey, uh, obey the words of God. And then we're supposed to baptize them in the name of the Father, God, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, those three. And then we teach them to observe everything that God has commanded us. And we need to know that he is with us always. It says that he is remaining with us regardless of the circumstance and on every occasion. He is with us. Don't make it too deep. He with you. Whatever you think about, he with you there too. To the end of the age. So point number one, our mission. What is our mission? 2819 is to, it, uh, it says, command all believers. It says all believers. So our mission Go forth and make disciples of all nations, all nations. Our mission is that for all believers to go out and make disciples, which is followers of Christ. It did not say, pastors, your mission is to go out and make disciples. It didn't say, people of clergy, your mission. It says that we all, all of our mission is to go out. That is so amazing. I work on a job where some stuff I say that's above my pay grade. I'm the webmaster and sometimes I get emails that I can handle. Emails like, hey, uh, my child does not know where first block is. Okay, here's the schedule. Or I get an email that says, I'm trying to register for school. I can forward you somewhere, but I can't handle that. I can't do that for you. Some other crazy emails come in that's above my pay grade. I'm going to send it on to somebody else. I'm not even going to touch it. So we work in a system where there's levels and all of this stuff. But what this word is saying, we all are on the same level when it comes to making disciples. We all need to go out to all nations. Don't let, because you don't have a title, make you feel like it's not your job to obey the Great Commission. Once you come into this body of Christ, you're supposed to be going out and making more believers teaching them about God, teaching them about the Holy Spirit. That's what our commission is. I've always said, sometimes we are the only Bible that some people will read. And if you're not making a disciple of Christ, you might be making an enemy of Christ. You may say that I'm a Christian, and then you go to work mad one day and treat somebody bad, and they're like, if this is what a Christian's about, I don't want nothing to do with it. So just be cognizant of how you act when you're around other people. And remember that your mission is to make believers. Make believers out of other people. Point number two, teaching and living the gospel. If you look at uh, number 20, it says that uh, we need to teach everybody to observe everything that I've commanded you. And know that I'm with you always to the end of the age. Everywhere you go, I'm with you. So when I talk about teaching and living the gospel... We need to understand that it is important not just to share the gospel. I'm just going to get up here and preach. I'm going to get up and teach. I ain't going to do nothing I say. We have to live the gospel as well. Not just teach it, but we got to live it as well. So one, we got to share it. Point one, we got to share the gospel with everybody. Point two, we need to live the gospel. We need to live it out. We got to actually live it out. Remember, you're the only Bible. The Bible of McKissick, the Bible, like, think about Amplified Version, New Living Translation, King James Version, Jessica Version, Shanika Version, Liana Version, Amani Version, AJ Version, Jericho Version, Vanessa Version. There's a version of the Bible out there with their name on it because you are the only Bible they read. So you got to live out that Bible. How can you live out that Bible? You can live out the Bible by apologizing when you make a mistake because hey yeah i wronged you man my bad um, i apologize what can i do to make that right because we know that there are scriptures that tell us that we don't need to uh leave any stone unturned we need to go back and correct things before we try to move forward so therefore they might not know the actual scripture but they are reading that scripture by the way you're living how about showing grace and mercy to somebody who did you wrong? And everybody's watching to see how you respond. 
Oh man, if it was me, well, the God I serve gives me peace. So I don't have to go back and forth with this person. There you go, you living out the gospel. How about you being the, the good Samaritan? There's somebody from the other team and you ran them over or, or, or you're up by 50 and they're saying, let's try, let's break this record on, let's bust the clock. And you're like, you know what? There's no reason for me to embarrass that other team. But there's no reason, they're already down, why kick them? We've already won the game. You have to live out the gospel. And now we're talking about point three, my final point. The promise that Jesus gave us. And this is what gets me. He said that I will be with you always. So when it's time for me to tell somebody about Christ, and I'm a little bit nervous because I'm, you know, shy or whatnot or whatever you want to call it. Maybe there's some anxiety coming in. I need to understand that he's with me. When I'm trying to live out the Bible, and I say, oh, I cannot. Oh, this is one more thing to me. I'm about to snap. God with me. I got a struggle I'm dealing with. God with me. He said he's going to be with me always. All the time. So as you're out here trying to advance your life of evangelism, then understand that God is with you. Let's go back over these points. The Great Commission. What is our mission? Our mission is to make disciples, make believers out of all nations. All of them. All of us. All nations. We're all called to go make believers. And then our uh, uh, teaching in point two was teaching and living the gospel. You got to live out the gospel. Don't just preach it. Practice what you preach. Even when it comes to making mistakes, how do you make mistakes? How do you bounce back from those mistakes? And our last point is the promise that Jesus gave us is that he's with us always. He is with us always. When you understand these things, you can be a better servant of Christ. You can be evangelist. Like I may say, one day, I, there will be a day that I'm just out here evangelizing. My daughter of money, I, I will toot her horn right now. I'm looking at her picture on my desk. She is an amazing young lady. What I love about her most is that she has a spirit of evangelism. You ask anybody who, who came in contact with her, be the ram. She is so proud. And I wish I had the courage that she has. I'm going to get it one day. It's coming because she got it from somewhere. Maybe she got it from me. Maybe she got it from her mom. But she is a true example of living out the Bible, living out like the evangelism because she talk about it. He's rich man. She's giving them out. Like she's giving them that. Like that's it. But let's pray. God, thank you for this time of preaching, teaching, learning, experiencing you, spending with you, God. I, I, I pray that it hit the target. God, your word says it will not come back void. So I just thank you for those who are now about to go out and exercise this new form of evangelism, this 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 uh, energizing that they have, God. I thank you for guiding our steps and our actions as we move, not from this, uh, this spirit, but just from this place. God, I thank you in advance for the lives that will save as a result of this message. Amen. Hey, if you don't know Christ, I once again ask that you would give your life to Christ. And if you want to do that, you need to be led in the prayer of salvation. Can you DM us, send us an email? I will personally contact you and walk you through that. And then your name will be written in the book of life. So, hey, I'm glad I didn't keep you long. If you like it, share it, tag somebody, tag somebody, put them in the game. Let them know that this was an amazing Bible study. You want them to be a part of it. Hey, God loves you. So do I. That's it. That's all. And goodbye. I'm out.